Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, everybody. How we doing? Good morning, good day, good afternoon, wherever you are. How is it going? March Madness is over. I'm not gonna be streaming every day anymore, but probably like every second day. I found out a lot about myself and streaming and everything. I do wanna keep regularly streaming, but I do wanna like also have some, you know, time to edit things and everything. It was a little bit too much. But it was good. We made it. Every day streaming. 31 streams in the month of March. Even more, I think. Pretty dope. I think right now I'm like every second day streaming, every second day YouTube video. So there's everyday content, but it's not like every day a YouTube video and a stream and a short and everything. But we'll see. Uh, today we're gonna finalize our speedrun challenge. We're gonna talk about that later. First, we're gonna watch some videos together Because those are the videos I would watch anyway, so why not do it on s on screen? Why not do it on stream? There it is Hey, how's it going, chat? Wait, let me bring up chat. Yeah, we're gonna try to finalize the overworld speedrun challenge after we watch some videos. We're gonna do, like, we're gonna set the rule set, set the price, set everything, everything you need to know, and I'm gonna try myself to make a good time. I want to be up there in those leaderboards. All right, first video. Well, look at you! Daniel Trasher. I found this guy a few days, weeks ago, and I think he's doing extremely funny, creative content. So I wanted to show you. Oh. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Did you have a good date last night? I did. You sure did. You done spooked me with your effervescence. Yeah, I did. Upon entering my domicile. Yeah. That's great. You're happy. We're all happy. You know, let's all clap our hands. Huh? Nah, stop it. No, clap your hands. Come on. No, I don't want to. Clap your hands, Dennis. Clap your little fleshy tarantulas together. I'm really good, thanks. Come on. Clap your hands, man. No. Clap your hands, man. What are you waiting for? Well, you're not going to clap your hands. You're just going to stand there and you're going to be happy. You're not going to clap your hands. Clapping is a young man's game. What do you mean? Just clap your hands. I don't need to clap. Clap for the joy lives within my heart. Is he okay? Just clap your hands, man. Sometimes you must be happy and know it and not. Sometimes I feel like I want to do stuff like that. I think he's very talented and I don't think that's easy what he's doing, but just have like different, like make a funny sketch with like different versions of myself being the characters. I think that works way better than, than you would think it would work. Like, every time somebody does this, it feels like those are really different characters. Even though they just have, like, two pieces of clothing different. Boy, you're not helping! Clap your hands. Are you happy? Yes! Do you know what? Yeah? Then clap your f***ing hands! What's wrong? Uh, when all world, after we watch some videos, I'm just gonna try to... ...to wake up. We watch some chill videos together. Good morning, Chagamatl. How we doing? And yeah, we're gonna finalize the speedrun challenge after the video segment. With you. Will you stop? All right, all right, already. Jeez. I don't want to. I'm gonna beat your ass. Oh my gosh! What are you doing? I'm throwing things. Why empty water bottles, huh? Because I don't want to break anything. Come, ma'am, boy. Why are you saying it like that? That's it. I'm calling the police. Are you filming this right now? 911, what's your emergency? Yes, I am being terrorized by my roommates because I'm not clapping my hands. Are you happy? What? Are you happy and you know it? I suppose I am. Put me on speaker. Can the alleged perpetrators hear me? Loud and clear. Yeah, that's us. Good. Beat his ass. 
No, 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 no. What happened next, you ask? Well, we didn't see much of Dennis after that day. Some folks say he packed up and headed west. Others say he was killed right then and there. That's what the police report said anyway. But legend has it, if you go out to the woods on a clear summer's night and you really listen, you can still hear the sound of Dennis not clapping his f***ing hands like a little baby. This video is sponsored by Floki. Good I shit. I'm really appreciating him doing his ad segment at the end. And we can fuck off. Bye. Hello, Pika. I'm not sure if we're gonna watch this one. Something I'm really personally interested. Huge place in the Plunderstone tournament in World of Warcraft. But I don't think so many people in here are World of Warcraft heads. So maybe we keep it a little bit more general with... Hello everyone, this is your, your daily, daily dose of internet. internet. This delivery driver dropped off a package and then came back and apparently stole their security camera. Oh yeah? stole it how did they get the footage because it's linked up to a computer or something all right fair this guy was so excited to have his new car delivered car falls imagine the car falls oh Opa. ah that hurts it's like with the new phone right once you get a scratch on it it's all the pressure is gone you can just use it like a normal human being same with the car, he did him a favor. That's too much baggage. Oh. A guy stole a tractor, so a police officer gave permission to a construction worker to try and stop him. Okay, grab that. Quick, quick, quick. If you can flip it, flip it! No. 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 Hey, let's back to us. No. Hey, I think. I have never seen this type of disrespect before. Come on. Okay. That was not <laughs> This crow saw that this kangaroo was covered in ticks and decided to help out by eating them. That helps. Win win. After a few minutes, almost all the ticks were gone. This is how a chiropractor works on a giraffe. Nice crew. The left, his upper neck on the right hand side was irritated. That's great. For some reason, this airport uses Microsoft PowerPoint to give updates. It's cool and there's a lot of cases and luggage. <laughs> That's gonna be a Hi. joke. You are currently being recorded. Hi. I currently don't care because I'm Amazon! <laughs> Amazon! This nosy neighbor decided it was a good time to clean his windows. This horse escaped from their carriage and ran away to freedom. Freedom! Dude, that looks dangerous. He don't that is the end of this video. Or we hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Later. Cute. Dude, Daily Dose never disappoints. Hey. Speedrun in. The eye to the eye or other speed run? Yes, we're gonna do the speed run to the eye. That's gonna be our first speed run challenge. <clears throat> I'm gonna explain all the rules, what you have to do. We're gonna try it ourselves so you can see it, and I wanna have a good time as well. Uh, but let's watch some more videos. I wasn't sure if we wanna gonna watch Brain Rot is holding you back from Healthy Chima.
healthygamer.gg. Uh, let's keep browsing. Hello everyone, this is your Daily Dose of Internet. Better. This guy had no idea something was waiting for him down below. <laughs> Look, he's gonna go in. It was a barracuda that thought it was food, but quickly turned away. It's gone. Never to be seen again. No victim, no crime. This might be the worst tan line of all time. Well, it's something else. You never know what's hiding underneath the snow. <laughs> he fell into a hidden waterfall, but wasn't hurt and managed to get out okay. Guys, never ski or to a hidden water in a riverbed. This in the middle is a riverbed. Don't you go there. Bad idea. <laughs> He fell into a hidden waterfall, but wasn't hurt, and managed to get out okay. Oh, hey, could you pass me a fork? Here you go. Oh no, sorry, I meant like a metal one. <laughs> <coughs> that was pretty good. See, it works even if she doesn't dress up differently. It's the same exact person. It's crazy. Hey, could you pass me a fork? Here you go. Oh, no, sorry. I meant like a metal one. <laughs> I've so seen what living in the future is like, and I think we need to go back. This dog made a new friend. Who's coming in with it? <laughs> this baby just woke up from the best nap ever. You faced it too. Stop zooming in like that. <laughs> this horse just saw a zebra for the very- That was a cattail, right? Damn, those suckers expand in your mouth, huh? <laughs> this horse just saw a zebra for the very first time. Scientists just discovered something new about marlins. Before they attack a school of fish, they suddenly get brighter. Scientists think that this is a way that marlins tell other marlins that they are about to attack. That's cool. Are you sad that when I'm an adult, I'm not gonna be here anymore? What do you mean? Yes, you are. No, like when I'm an adult. Where are you gonna go? Like to a different house. With who? Same thing while mommy has. What? A boyfriend. What the? Yeah. Who said that? Who said you can have a boyfriend? When I'm an adult. No. Yes. I don't want you to. <laughs> that is the end of this video. Are we? In that conversation. He was kind of the kid. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Later. Later. Beautiful. Looks a bit like Switzerland there. Alright, I have no idea what that is. Wait, give me a second. It was like a 15-year-old video, that one. What's that? My six-song album entitled Bow for Show is currently available on iTunes, with three songs that have never been heard on the internet. And if I try to pirate it for free, I'll get AIDS. I would have guessed scurvy. Well, see you later, ghost of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Want to hear a rap?
Now I don't know if all Boy Scouts are gays They could probably tie the knot in like 50 different ways Got a safe full of cherries cause I pop it and lock it A girl's like a fridge, once a week you should stock it Girl, if you're into rimming, it's only safe if you're swimming And girl, don't sit on that couch cause I treat my objects like women I spit fire like I just blew a demon My shit's so hot, I'll leave your toilet bowl steaming I'm gonna tear it like the cards of the gypsies You'll bleed for so long, you'll get monthly ellipses If your pants are loose, I'll replete you You're a first time vegan and it's nice to meet you I'm Bo Yo, I'm the greatest Rapper ever, and I'll weather you, weather, whether you think I'm clever or not. Think you're better, you're not. Don't need a sweater, I'm hot. I'm a real G show, they can really find your G spot. <laughs> what the hell's a G spot? Good track. I might pirate it. Go to a vagina orchard, count one, two, three, spin that plane around, you got a third world country. That's right. Consider yourself warned, I'm offensive and creative like handicap porn. You're playing with your breasts. Excuse me, can I try? Maybe we're gonna get demonetized for this stream. Quiet, ma'am, you're pushing them together like a titty Venn diagram. Look at that crack, excuse me, can I buy a gram? Right below your diaphragm, ass looks like you're hot and ham. First base, we're making out. Second base, I'm getting faked out. Third base, I'm getting takeout. And I try to take it home if I knew I'd take it out, but I just don't know. I said, I just don't care. I said, my flow so cold, I need a tampon from a polar bear. And you can spell and smell my stink. B.O. lingers, and it makes you think, cause I'm Bo, yo. And I'm the greatest rapper ever, and I'll weather you, weather, whether you think I'm clever or not. I think you're better, you're not. Don't need a sweater, I'm hot. You got two eyes, only got one shot. Yeah. Yo. Cause girls are like donuts when I be busting bone nuts Like I make them cream filled to give them a layer of glaze I'm like Doug's friend Skeeter whenever I meet her Cause I skeeter so hard people call her Patty Mayonnaise Yo! My girl's epileptic cause she's the one I'm jerking with Come on you Asian child labor, show me what you're working with Ooh, large machinery Cause there's an inverse relationship between respect and sex. I'm talking about religious sex, like a Mormon sect that says you can't have sex with members of different sex, but you can't have sex with members of the same sex. So if the sex can't be different, the sex can't be the same. The only sex left is some left hand shame. And girl, I left you because you left the game. And if that don't feel right, then you can write my name because I'm Bo, yo. I'm the greatest rapper ever, and I'll weather you, weather, whether you think it better or not. Nah, think it better, you're not. Nah, don't need a sweater, I'm hot. If I can't think of another rhyme, then I ought. Two, think of one. Yeah, break this down, man. Yo, yo. Look past the skin, look at the lyrics. I run miracle circles around you like spherical lyrics. This isn't about ironic pigment. If you're imagining this, then I'm a chronic figment. Yeah. Feel it, ready? Man, my junk's so long that it hangs and swings With a nude beach, people think I'm looking for lost rings Play the skin flute, your big boy sings If you want to take it all, wear African neck rings Oh, yeah Come on Haters call me gay, but that ain't hatin' Cause I'm not homophobic, my morals are straight And if I'm in the closet, you up below me Taking the B.A.T. out of basement, homie Yeah Yo, cause I'm Bo, yo I'm the greatest rapper ever And I'll weather you, weather, whether you think I'm clever or not I think you're better, you're not Don't need a sweater, I'm hot I'm a real G, they can really find your G-spot Yeah, yeah, yo, yo I'm a real G, homie, oh, they can really find your G-spot Oh Oh my god, buy my EP on iTunes Right now, go, right now While I stall, buy it right now Good shit <laughs> Thank you, YouTube Recommendation, for this 15-year-old gem. It was a cringe fest. It was funny. He's very talented. Just dropping those lines on acapella is crazy, I think. I don't know. Well done. Well all, done. You're we got a bit more. Everybody still up for it? Everybody still here? In the watch parade. Hey, y'all mind if I change this? They're announcing a new iPhone today. Didn't you just get one? Yeah, but this one's gonna be like faster battery. What is this? Take a seat, Daniel. Why can't I change the channel? Parental controls. It's time to admit you have a problem, Daniel. We're trying to help you, Daniel. Can y'all stop saying my name so much? It's freaking me out. You got a glimpse of something that's catching your eye. You wanna buy this thing? No good reason why. You've got shiny object syndrome. Shiny object syndrome? Pay attention, Daniel. This is for your own good. All right.
anyway. You spend a bunch of cash on crap you don't need. You bought a hundred books that you're never gonna read. S O S. You've got shiny object syndrome. You're trying to get your life more organized, but this cast iron skillet's got you hypnotized. Find a peloton to improve your physique, and now you're moving on to be a big and for a week. Find a thrill set, you practice it daily, till you decide that you wanted the ukulele. Buy the journal to record what your mood is now, to do it all away because you said your mood is now. Syndrome. I was Buddhist, though. You made us throw you a bar mitzvah last week. That's true. Everybody get up and wave your hands. All the kids with the low attention span say loud so everybody understands why you spend a hundred bucks on a gluten free pants. Sorry for supporting the celiac community. They are the same as regular pants. Hop inside the metaverse, take VR for a spin, buy some virtual land so you can flip it and win. Be a crypto conquistador, clever and conniving, making coin like your royalty, medievally thriving. NFT's nuts, buy a monkey or cat so we can cash you outside. How about that? The stuff that you have you can't enjoy, cause you're always on the hunt for that next new toy. You think this will spark some life inside? Kill a rush, but the luck, give it up to be high. If you lose it now, and a car that can drive for you. I get it. I'm doing too much. Yes. You've shown me the error of my ways, okay? I gotta make a change. That's okay, man. So starting today, I will buy every book on minimalism there ever was. I'll yoga twice a day, every day for a year. Oh, no. Marie Kondo will be my spirit animal. There are several reasons why that is not okay. And I'm gonna force peace upon myself if it's the last thing I do! Yeah, that doesn't seem healthy at all. I'm gonna meditate so hard right now. And now for a word from today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Good so All right, we got an Illuvian video too. I'm not letting you down, guys. We got Scoriox here. I haven't watched the video in a while. Uh, let's see what it's all about. The big clickbait. Title is this, which just looks beautiful. And then future Illuvium airdrop could easily onboard 1 million players. Let's see. There are a lot of people out there that think because Illuvium is not a mobile Web3 game, that it's not going to have many players. And I think up until now, you would have had plenty of reason to believe that. Now, Gods Unchained is on desktop and has an okay player base and has for a very long time. How many? But Axie Infinity and things like Pixels Online have a really large player base in the Web3 space. How many? And yet they're both highly accessible, not only to mobile, but in the case of Pixels Online, you can access them from your browser. But I'm here to tell you that not all hope is lost. There is some new evidence that has come to light that suggests that there are plenty of people that are willing to play desktop games in the Web3 space. And I've always thought that, but it's really hard to see evidence of it. And I've got some interesting information today. And then I'm gonna talk about why I think that's gonna happen. But first, let's take a look at this snippet from the latest Najaf AMA with Kieran Warwick. And let's talk about that in just a moment. The details, but I'd like to see uh, two airdrops done or, or yeah, two two different drops, one, one uh one campaign where uh and i think a lot of people were like hey you just dropped the the fuel is that one of them and the answer is no right like the the thank you uh i feel like is a good one so you heard it here that kieran warwick plans on having two airdrops for alluvium Okay, and he talks about it later in the video, but basically he wants it to go off a point system that is based around different activities you do in game in the Alluvium ecosystem, whether it be Alluvium Zero, the Alluvium Overworld, or the Alluvium Arena. And I think this is all really good. This is the current meta in marketing a Web3 game, and we've already seen it bring in lots of different players, especially with something like Pixels Online, and we've seen it with a few other products as well. But what makes me think 
that this is going to attract a PC audience to Alluvium. And as the title suggests, I think Alluvium could reach 1 million players. I have no idea if it's going to happen this year, but I have a few things that I want to suggest and speculate on, and I think you guys are going to really like it. But before we talk about that... I can see a million happening in a few years, if everything goes as planned. We have to briefly discuss this project, because that's where I'm finding some of this new evidence, and it is called Nyan Heroes. I still don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. As you can see, it looks great. It looks really playable. I don't know if I would say triple A, but the graphics and the playability and the smoothness and everything looks really great. What I can say is as far as Web3 games go- Looks like a shitty Overwatch to me. Oh, this looks like a proper game, which is the same thing I would say about Alluvium. It's got some time behind it. It's got some mechanics. It's got a gameplay loop. Now this is heavily multiplayer. I mean, shitty Overwatch is maybe a little bit harsh. Looks all right. Bit clunky though. Team-based gameplay, likely more exciting to a larger amount of players, but Alluvium is going to get to that uh, multiplayer route. Of it's a pretty hard knockoff though from Overwatch. Like everything, the scenery, all the buttons, like all everything, the UI, everything is designed to look exactly like Overwatch with some Valorant elements up here, which usually I don't find very attractive. If it's a too obvious knockoff, I'm usually like, well, I'm just going to play the original. But I'm talking from a gamer's experience, right? I want to see Web 3 games that are as good as Web 2 games. Where I'm not deciding, oh, I'm going to play this because I can earn even though it's shittier. No, I'm going to play this because it's the best game. And wow, it has blockchain in the back of it. And that's what I see in Illuvium, right? I want to play it because it's an amazing game or amazing games. And then... The whole blockchain being able, blockchain, the whole blockchain and being able to own your own assets that comes in as a bonus on top of that. Eventually, as well, and things like that. So, I really think that there is some audience overlap at minimum because they're both played on the PC and not even low end PCs. Now, I don't know how what the specs you need for Nyan Heroes are, but I would assume it's actually really similar to the minimum specs to run Alluvium, if not a little bit harder to run Nyan Heroes because Alluvium actually has some really good optimization in the game. Now, this doesn't necessarily equate to gamers and people. In my opinion, marketing is just the spark that lights the fire. What I mean by that is marketing gets your game in front of lots of different people. And we know that marketing and airdrop campaigns can get a game like Alluvium in front of at least 200,000 people. Let's put it that way. You can get in front of 200,000 people. The true test of a game's retention and growth is actually word of mouth. If I go in and play Alluvium for the first time because I'm going to get some ILV tokens out of it, I go and play it a bunch and all the rest of it. And I'm like, crap, I actually really like this. I caught this Atlas. That is really cool. I'm going to go tell my friend Luke or my friend uh, Vince or Jerry, go and play the game. You're going to really enjoy it. And then they jump in. And then if everyone grabs five friends, you hit one million. Now that sounds a little bit ridiculous, but hear me out. Imagine someone goes in, they pay $1 to enter a stage one run. Reasonable for them. I don't know. They go in and enter a stage one run and they capture two atlases and sell them for like 80 cents or a dollar or they get a hollow atlas and they sell it for like 10 bucks. Now they're really telling their friends and then get this, you have 200,000 people that spent $1 and everyone's starting to get revenue distributions on all. I thought about that. Could you actually design the game in a way that newcomers, beginners have more luck? Can you rig the system? To make newcomers get like something crazy so they're hooked to it it sounds a bit it sounds a bit sketchy and devious and probably unethical but just a thought experiment here because that would be insane right everybody who starts up the game has like guaranteed profit in the game <laughs> it sounds so wrong it sounds like a casino who makes you win a few bucks in the beginning always like guaranteed so then they can cash out on you we should probably not do that. All of this money that's churning through the ecosystem, even in its early days, the ILV tokens going up based on revenue distribution or whatever else, or people are getting passive income. 
And then that sends out information to the rest of the community. They're saying, not only can you go in and participate in this airdrop, not only can you earn money from selling your alluvials, but people who hold a token are getting passive income. This revenue distribution thing that has been a concept for three years actually works. It's working. Okay. And then what do you say? It has more dividends than other large companies or something. I don't know. There's lots of other ways to speculate on this. But I think what this tells us is that there is at least two to 250,000 people that I believe are waiting to play a game like this. And that's proven by the different reposting and likes and things on the airdrop campaign for Noun Heroes. And then after that, the game just has to be good. And I think it's going to be good enough to do some decent word of mouth, but with upgrades coming across 2024 and early 2025, Alluvium is going to be the game that changes Web3 gaming. Nice. Thank you, Skorix, for the video. I should learn from him how to talk a little bit more calmly. Sometimes I'm going on a, on a <laughs> tangent, I feel like. Ninety percent of people will lose an alluvium. Here's how you become the ten percent that win. <laughs> all right, all right, Najib. All right, let's get into it. Tell me. See, for anyone to earn money in alluvium, somebody needs to lose, and that's the same concept when it comes to you know trading any crypto coin or even any stock. So in the stock market, if you buy like a Tesla stock for a hundred dollars, and it are we talking about alluvium investment or the gameplay loop? If that's going to be a net positive or net mm, negative. Because that's still a big question on our minds, right? If we actually gonna, like, if you have a big sample size, 1 million overworld runs, would you get out with profit? Or is it designed so the house wins? Which would make more sense because then it's a more sustaining economy. But then, like, long-time pro players or long-time players who want to extract value from it have a hard time doing so. So it, it feels like it has to be a net positive to to satisfy the web free audience. And maybe you have that with land, so you, we don't need it in overworld. Um, but if it's net negative, the best play is to play till you get lucky, cash out and then never play it again. I don't know. Like I, that would be I would be really curious on answers on that, but I don't think they have answered that yet. It should be written in stone, though, like I, I'm sure they have a. They already have a system that they want to implement. Maybe we should ask them in the next AMA. It goes to 125 and you want to sell it. That means there has to be a buyer at 125. And if he's talking about investment, what he's doing right now with stock, that's my story. Or that's why I don't do day trading anymore or any like short term investing. Because I know there's people on the other side who do this for a job, who are professionals, and I'm their cash cow. Because I'm a noob trying to day trade. In the long run, they're going to cash in on me. Because all the cash they make is from people that trade worse than them, right? So that's why I'm not in there anymore. For you to make some money on that. And it's similar for, you know, Web3 games like, say, Axie Infinity. During the summer of 2021, more and more people kept buying into it. So the people who were there earlier were able to extract some money in... in so a Ponzi scheme earned from it but the majority of the people that got into a game like axie ended up losing so when it comes to alluvium in one sense it's the same yet it's actually very different so think about it this way if you yeah, we don't have a ponzi axie was a total ponzi scheme get in early cash out on the people that get in behind you plan uh, a vacation or a trip to to disney world or say you bought a ticket to your favorite sporting event you're trading your money for entertainment for fun now when you get back home from that event if you think about just the monetary side of things you lost you lost money by attending that event or going on that vacation but you're okay with it because the roi expected was not from a monetary standpoint you just wanted enjoyment and that's what you get in good games gamers are willing to spend money lose from a monetary standpoint but trade that loss for fun so think about in the traditional web 2 games you have fortnite v bucks you have clash of clans gems 
FIFA packs and Roblox bucks. Gamers are spending money on these games purely for the enjoyment of the game. You know, maybe that spend is, is helping them progress along quicker. Maybe it's giving them some skin or flex in a game. Or maybe it's making them stronger so they can defeat. So I get it. We actually not a Ponzi scheme and you actually might lose money in the long run in Illuvium. But it's such a good game that it wouldn't matter like compared to other Web 2 games, right? The problem is, is this really going to resonance with the Web 3 audience that we're trying to attract? attract? Because I feel like Web 3 and Web 2 audience have both so different values that they want to see in a game. Where one is like, I just want to earn money. Doesn't matter the game. And the other one is like, I just want to have a good game. Don't care about the rest. It's going to be hard to attract both. But Web3 is definitely our main audience. And from there, I think we need to expand. Um, but maybe there's going to be a shift happening in Web3 gamers' perspectives where they're actually like, oh, I can earn a little bit playing this. It's not all about earning, but I can still like justify my gaming with the earning aspect. And it's actually enjoyable. Like If people join Illuvium and they can earn at least something, they're never going to go back to Axie, which is just a dog shit game, I think. That next boss. They're not doing this for an ROI. And for these games that I just mentioned, they're all still in the you know traditional Web 2 gaming space. So all the money that gets put into those games, the majority is going to the higher ups in that company. Some of that is being reinvested into making new games and improving their games. But a lot of it is just going into the pockets of the elites. With Web 3... That's the funny thing, huh? Everybody's like, oh, crypto is scam, blah, blah, blah. And then you look at real world scenarios with like Web2 games and big companies and I don't know, Amazon Gaming, whatever. Dude, they're scamming people a lot, like microtransactions or just like anything, you know? Like even World of Warcraft, you, <laughs> how genius must they have felt when they realized they can charge everybody every year for their add-on, which is like buying a new game. So they bring out their new game, their add-on for their existing game and charge people for that one time. And on top of that, we can just ask everybody 13 bucks a month because we're, you don't need another game. We're constantly improving, constantly developing this. So if you pay us monthly, you can have this game which constantly evolves, which just turned out to just reset your progress every year. And you still had to buy the add-on and still had to buy a new game instead of just buying a new game, playing it and then buying the new game. You had to do that plus buy a subscription for World of Warcraft. I thought about that the other day and dude, that's a really genius move they pulled off there. Gaming and especially Alluvium, things are a lot different. The participants... Cause, sorry, because you see it in, in like the Xbox Game Pass or whatever it is. <clears throat> that's subscription based, but they don't charge you. Like you cannot do it anymore these days. They cannot charge you to buy actually add-ons while you're actually paying subscription monthly. So that's crazy that World of Warcraft could, like, was able to keep that up for like 15 years or whatever. Charge gamers double. Of this ecosystem. A little bit on a tangent, it's not really the topic. Are the ones that are actually benefiting. So whereas in Fortnite, if you want to buy a skin, you buy the V-Bucks, get the skin. And if you don't want that skin anymore, or you decide you don't want to play Fortnite anymore, oh well. You spent your money, you got your skin. Now let's say Fortnite were to shift to become a Web3 game. In that scenario, you could buy your V-Bucks, which might be an actual coin on chain, exchange it for a skin, which will be an actual NFT. And if a couple months later, someone else says, ooh, I really want that skin that you have, they can buy it off of you and you can get that return. So there are a lot of people who hate on the idea of NFTs and being able to trade assets. But when you think about it, it's like, who do you want to hold that value? The elites at the top of that company or the gamers who are actually spending the money in game and playing the game? To be fair, with Illuvium, the main point is the revenue distribution, right? 100% of the revenue goes to token holders. Illuvium holds some token themselves, so they're getting some revenue. But that's, like, you can say, see it plain and simple where the money goes. But that doesn't really have to do with the NFT side of things. Like, you could still have a blockchain games where all the money goes to the higher-ups. Usually that's the case because people want money. That's why they do the whole thing. There is not many passion projects out there in Web3 that do it just for the love of it. Movium is going to be one of the first games. Well, there is, I'm sure, a lot of passion projects out there. But a, a big project needs a lot of money to work. And if you put in years and if you hire really, really experienced people, you want them to get good money for their work, right?
I didn't want to shit here on Web3 projects, because there's a lot of passion projects out there. But it's not like anybody would... It doesn't seem like there is an option where... where for example, the old school style of, of games, right? You develop for years, then you bring out the game, people buy it, people pirate it, and that's it. Like, that's not... In this day and age, people, we need more income, passive income, if we are a gaming studio, it feels like. In the Web3 space, to actually have that AAA quality, where people are going to want to play this game simply to have fun playing. When you think back of the concept of a monster collector like Pokemon, there are going to be people who are spending money in this game to collect these alluvials just to hold them in their collection. And these alluvials have value, but if they're not trying to extract value and they just... Sorry, I'm pausing so much, but I want to go back to the skin example from Fortnite, which is all nice and cool, but I think the big part which is important for all of that to work is the rarity. And that's what we have with the monsters, with the alluvials, because they are on a bonding curve, and as soon as there is, I don't know, whatever number, a thousand atlas catched, there's no, no atlas going to be there anymore. Or, for example, there's a thousand atlas catched, now there's only like ten left. And over the next year, those 10 will be caught and then it's gone. And then you have that rarity, which people really also enjoyed, for example, in League of Legends, where you had the old skin that like the pack skins and stuff like that, r really special skins that wouldn't have re-release. And that would be really special to people to have that skin. Nobody else can get it anymore. And I got it. And there is only 100 in the full League of Legends. Like there is skins in League of Legends that only like 10 people have or something like that. There's really extremely rare skins. They were time, time limited to get and really hard to get. And then they went kind of down the corporate structures 10 years later where would, they would re-release them or there would be ways to get them. And this was always a very sad moment for me. They also had it in World of Warcraft. Like if you were purchasing Wrath of the Lich King Special Collector's Edition, you would get that, uh, how is it called? Like the, the banner or whatever. A special item and then now 10 years later they're like oh yeah, yeah get amazon prime and you get that special item and all the wow players are like dude like i was so proud of that nobody could get it i got it because i got the collector's edition edition 10 years ago and now he's just giving it to anybody with amazon primes like they lost thousands of players just with that move and i didn't know where i was going with that but exactly want to hold on to these assets then technically from a monetary standpoint they're losing and then you have the other aspect of the game is the arena where people are going to want to collect these alluvial well i kind of remember where i was going so that's the important thing right it has to be rare it has to be a time limited you can get it and then never again so people are really proud really happy with what they have because nobody else can get it anymore if you come in now you got that og rewarding feeling and that's what is needed. And I think Illuvium really realizes that and hopefully will never go back at that and really keep first editions, first editions forever. I'm, I'm really sure. They, they really, like they know. They have been in the same struggle. They have been Pokemon players and gamers and everything. So they know exactly. Without teams to compete. Maybe they need a really rare alluvial that's going to fit perfect in their team so that they can go and compete in the next tournament. So we've determined where this money is going, whether it's Web 2 or Web 3. Here's how you can take advantage of it in Alluvium. The first and easiest way you can take advantage in Alluvium is by buying the ILV token and staking it for revenue distribution. Now to put it simply, it means when players enter the game, they're spending money in the game. That money is used to buy ILV off of the market and distribute it back to the people who are staking the ILV. So again, another way where the revenue coming in isn't going straight up to the elites of the company, it's getting spread out between the token stakers. The next way to take advantage of this is Alluvium Zero land. So the land is gonna be what's generating the fuel that needs to get sold to the market in order for people to travel in. Sorry, I think at that point is always a little bit confusing when it, it's saying, oh, 100% is going to the token stakers. Well, how can Illuvium be self-sustaining if all their money goes away? Obviously, they have like, I don't know, 60% of the tokens, whatever the number is. You can ask someone else for that. A big chunk of the tokens is staked by Illuvium themselves, so they pay out themselves, right? I feel like I, I would like to mention that always when we talk about staking, because otherwise people, like after a day of thinking about it, they're like, wait, what? How can this even work? And then they ask and they're like, well, of course. 
play this game and do different in-game transactions. Now, what I forgot to mention about the ILV staking and the rev disc is that's 95% of the revenue. The other 5% of the revenue is going to the people who own the land and are playing Alluvium Zero. When the landowners produce X amount of fuel and sell it to the market, the DAO is coming in with 19X, so 95% of that, which is going to be used for rev disc, and the 5% is going straight to those landowners. And this last one is where I think the biggest opportunity is going to be. Now, this is not financial advice, but I think actually going in and playing this game in the overworld, farming the resources, so whether you're catching alluvials or other resources like shards and orbs, I think if you master the overworld and how to find and capture the best alluvials, if you're paying attention to the markets where you know certain resources are selling for higher on the secondary market, certain alluvials are selling for more on the secondary market, and you're going into the overworld to farm it with a purpose, I think that's going to be the biggest opportunity out there. And now on this channel, that's something I'm definitely going to be looking into. I'm going to be playing all aspects of Alluvium, but I'm going to be looking to make a return out of this. So I'm going to be combing the marketplace. And there must be a return, right? Because we talked earlier about if it, if you have a million runs, are you even going to make money? Or is it overall a loss, like similar like gambling and casinos? But there has to be an overall return because that's what the crypto space is all about. And so I think maybe the return... And if you're not positive or not negative, it's going to be determined by how good you play, how fast you can. Maybe also the time investment is going to be taken into this calculation. So at the end, if you're really effective, really good at the game and fast, then you're going to be able to make a lot of money. Because instead of spending one hour to make one buck or 10 bucks or five bucks, which wouldn't really be worth your time, you can spend one hour to make 50 bucks and therefore it suddenly becomes profitable. Whereas two bucks per hour would not be worth your time and you would overall lose. So that could be a nice distinction that we have seen also in arena and stuff like top 1000 leaderboards. If you're the best at the game, you get a lot of money. And I think that's a good thing. I think it's also good to reward people just by putting time in casual players who just want to invest time uh, are not the best at the game. They should still be able to earn a little bit because that's kind of the, the core idea of web free gaming, right? You can be a pro player without being a pro player. You can be a recreational, which makes sense because all that time you put into games is actually a lot of value for the companies. That's why free to play got so famous because just playing a game free to play brings a lot of value to the company. And that way, it's also nice that people that are free to playing also get some rewards back. Yeah. I might see a trend where, all right, so common shards are trending up in value. So whether I make a YouTube video about it or I put it out in a tweet on X, that could be an indication to go into the overworld and start farming those common shards. Or if there's a new game update and in certain alluvials get buffed, that might be an opportunity to be like, all right, a Scoriox got buffed. So let's spend this week traveling to the Shard Bluff region to try to catch the Scoriox. Make sure you're subscribed to my social so you don't miss these. And these are just the most straightforward ways to earn in Alluvium, but there really is many other opportunities. So check them out by clicking this next video. Thanks for watching. Nice outro. That was clean. Thank you for the video, Night Jeff. That was good. Really fun to watch. Sorry for pausing so many times. I'm a talker today. All right, we watch one or two more, then we play some overworld, set the rules for the speedrun challenge. I want to cut out a video, a YouTube video out of that. And then we're going to try to get the best time as well. Because I want to be in the top three. I'm going to pay myself out a price. I'm going to pay myself a price. <laughs> like if I'm first place in the speedrun challenge, I'm getting that disc. Um, close that. I think that's enough videos for today. Otherwise, we're going to be brain rotting. How's it called? Unusual memes. All right, I'll give you that because I'll be back in one second. I'll give you something to watch in the meantime. Piola. Yeah.
se tart. És az a baj, nagyon sokat, és azon gondolkodtam, hogy egyszer el... Toasted one more time. I can't fucking toast it anymore. That's getting out of hand. Hold on, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Yeah, she's right. You can eat the banana peel. I found that out the other day. I thought it was impossible. I googled it. You can do it. It's healthy. Tastes like shit though, apparently. I have it on the right spots, right? Yeah. I don't think so. Are you are you are you are you Allah <laughs> Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. God, unusual memes are great. So I got in this new bath bomb and it has charcoal in it. So that'll help me out a lot because I'm a very oily person. That's my chance hit that young boy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we got the hot, I mean not the hot, the cheese, uh, chicken drinks right here. Ah, that's oh, gross. The money of the vacuum suck. Your phone is gonna break. I was really hoping she would go nuts on the phone. Stacking. <laughs> give her, give her. Yeah. Perfect. Louis, Louis, are you hungry? That's three in a row, y'all. I'm serious. No. Yo, look at this booklet that came with my meds, dude. Why the fuck did they pack this so small? Jesus Christ! Oh, no trespassing. 
passa. There's literally nothing I hate more than cutting onions. Also, what the fuck? No, man. Ah, pero tú tienes lo. Espartanos! ¿Cuál es su profesión? If you are finished scanning, please touch finish and pay. Scan coupon now. Damn, why is there a pizza in the fridge? That's not the oven. <laughs> Looking about a thousand of these breakfast burritos out to these hungry students getting their day off right, guys. Burrito, banana. I like breathing that shit. It's not bad, you know what I mean? I've just been finding shit all <laughs> Jump in the middle, go, jump in. <laughs> 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 oh my god. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I wanted to see him crash. Can I buy some more? Can I buy some <laughs> they were whispering and then the bomb goes off. That's enough internet for today. Let's play some Illuvium. Let's get the speedrun challenge on its way. Watching other streamer streams or stream is almost like banks getting right to loan currency by issuing loans to the government. Sure, man. <laughs> I'm right there with you. I agree. I'm Western Union. All right, where's the music? There we go. Who's ready for a speedrun challenge? So, how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna do this? Yeah. 
you. That's a banger. I have to turn it down a little bit, though. Alrighty, everybody. This week's competition is gonna be an Illuvium speedrun challenge in the overworld. We're gonna do it in the Brightland steps. And you, there is a few rules you have to comply with. First off, you need to show your equipment. Because it's only gonna be allowed to have the basic Mac boots and the basic jetpack. So you gotta show in the video somewhere. You gotta record it, by the way, so you can prove that you actually did the speedrun. You have to show your basic Mac boots, your basic jetpack. That's the first thing. Then we're gonna load into a tier zero stage zero run in the Brightland steps. And then we're gonna start our speedrun challenge. You don't have to have a timer on screen. Like we can probably just count the seconds in the video. You have to upload your video to some social media platform. For example, Twitter, YouTube or whatever it is and you have to let me know so i can actually check them and give the winners their price talking about the price we're gonna have a big one place number one rank number one in the speedrun challenge is gonna get a mega disc i'm not sure which mega disc yet probably the cheapest one because <laughs> the cheapest one i think is at least 50 bucks maybe more and then the top two to five players like rank two three four and five is gonna get a standard disc that's the prices for the Luvium speedrun challenge in the old world that's gonna be our first attempt of doing so and i'm gonna try to get a good time down too because if i'm gonna get first place i'm gonna pay out myself that mega disc open it on stream and i'm gonna save some money um so you start here and yeah, once you take off, the timer is running. And we want to get to the Illuvium, to the Leviathan Eye. I'm going to show you where it is. And you have to go there, climb on the little plant, come all the way back here, hit the E button again. And once you're in this screen again, we start. So we start from this screen, from this little return to Sanctum Mesa home base screen, and we're going to return to this screen. The time in between those two screens is going to be your speed run run. All right, let's go. Follow the water, follow the water. Dude, we're so slow. I think we're in the wrong space, actually. I can't remember this beautiful water area here. Yeah, we definitely are in the wrong space. All right, reset, reset. That's the good thing. You can reset as many times as you want. Yeah, we had to go in this waterfall, actually, not in this one. We go, like, through here, come back around the corner, and there somewhere is the Leviathan Eye. Let's try again. All right. Three, two, one, let's go. Yeah, not in here, but in there. It's taking so much time. Come on. There's the cave. Alright, you gotta get in here. Don't get scared by a huge freaking eye looking at you. You gotta get to this plant. You gotta crawl up the plant. Like that. And then you get back. So you have to actually have to vault onto the plant. Otherwise, it doesn't count. You cannot just go into the cave and run back. You have to actually vault onto the plant. Crawl your way up there. And then all the way back. 
Shit, I missed the exit. We're in the wrong spot. Damn. All right, reset. Not as high, not as easy as it looks like. Let's try again. And go. Making good time. Alright, alright, pretty fast. Oh shit, that was bad. Get into the cave, get to the plant, and then crawl up the plant. Like that, and back. Came out the wrong end again. Oh no, we just have to take a right here. Oh shit, I didn't manage. Oh, that's a bad time. Oh, that's a really bad time. Screw it up. Time! I need some timer on the screen though. That wasn't a good run. We're gonna try again. Let me get a timer on screen. I only have a reverse timer, like a countdown, but should be should be fine. Start! Fighting really helps. No, maybe we should turn off auto vaulting. All right, crawl up the plant. There we go. Back we go. so far Look 
looking good. Can we get over here? Yeah, perfect. And back we go. Hard part is over. time uh, like two and a half minutes a little bit less sheesh all right let's try again on five what's up Marcelo just bought more LV nice you're choosing rich Five, three, two, one. We're trying to do a speedrun challenge here. We're trying to set a good time. Ooh, that's way better. We have to permanently be sliding. This part is really the hardest because you cannot really slide. You keep vaulting over everything. plant there we go I'm back Clean finish. Time. Two thirty again. Shit. All right, let's turn off. Chat back. Oh, mantle is probably when you climb up an edge. Which could be weird now. Oh, we still do it.
All right, let's try again. We started at five. Four, three, two, one, go. Come on. Yeah, that's a better line. Screwing it up. Double jump into glide. Into jump. No. Ah, that's a fucked up run. Alright. Need a bit of practice for that one. Need a little bit of practice for that one. We start at five again. Let's go. Good start. Just get clean over here. And then we double jump, glide. Oh shit. Nah, come on, dude. <laughs> Fuck. Dude, the beginning was clean. Then we got stuck a lot. Start at five, two, one, go. All right, regenerate. No. All right, not too bad. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Slide, jump. Good enough. Oh, come on. Fucking ledge. Oh, my God. I'm choking. Skipping. Fuck. 
Dude, this is harder than I thought to do it clean without like major fuck ups. Free freaking art. Wonder if there's a faster line to get to it though. Two, one, go. Start. Shit. Shit. Not too bad though. Actually really good. Plant? No, not the edge. The plant? Yes. And back we go. Jump. Jump. Glide. Jump. Jump. Boost. Glide. I'm all over the place. Up here. All the way. Jump. Fly. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Fuck, it was a good run. Oh, it was a good run. We're getting there. We're getting better at it. Alright, let's uh, just start at 50. Go! No. Alright, back we go. Maybe I should turn off auto slide. I feel like I'm gonna mess it up so many times. Let's try one run. Woo! Come on! Come on. Let's get a good run in. Three, two, one. Go! Oh, no, I need auto slide. I'm too used to it now. Alright, let's start at 3.30. restart right away i want to have a clean want to have a clean start at least all right we started at three started at 255 Go. Oh, 
Not bad, not bad. Yes. Clean. Not so clean anymore. Clean. Way better. Alright, alright. Be worse. Can we get up there with basic boots? Please! Oh my god. Kinda screwed it up there. like what 220 not good enough i don't think we get below two minutes but i want to get closer to two minutes at least all right start at five again rules for the speed run you have to show your equipment that you're actually just rocking the basic boots and the basic chat pack then you click e here you don't have to have a timer on screen, but it helps. And then as soon as you press escape, the run starts. All the way to the plant. Uh, to the eye, crawl up that plant and then back again. Too hard. All right, we started four. gonna be here for a while dude I can't hit the line good my cousin said looks like Fortnite oh yeah I guess you can see that all right all right we start at 740 740 everybody where did the timer go? There it is. That timer buggy. Okay, we started at 7.30. Go! Oh, wow. This time we were fast. Alright, let's keep building on it. Up here, regenerate, double jump. Fly, jump, fly, 
Make it all the way over there. Okay. All right, double jump. Fly. Jump. Fly. All right, still okay. Jump. Fly. Slide all the way in. Crawl up the plant. Yep. Back we go. Jump. Fly. Jump, jump. Fly, fly. Break it. Get up there. Alright, alright. Boost. Jump. Jump. Now get up there. Alright, and now again, straight up here. Alright, regenerate. Good, fly. Glide, fly. Fuck! No, no, no. Jump, 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 fly. Jump, fly. Time. Shit. Dude, we started at 7.30. That was almost a two-minute run. All right. Two-minute run is the new goal. It's doable. There was still a lot of things we could have cleaned up. We can do this. All right. At five minutes. Let's go. Better, cleaner, nastier, fly, alright, that's not too bad, actually really good, up the plant, and back. Jump, jump, fly, jump, jump, fly, stop the movement, get up here. Good, good, good. Do it. No. That was so good until we hit that ledge. Still okay. No. Time. What was that? Two minutes, five seconds or something. Let's get below two minutes and then I'm gonna call it. That's the goal. A sub two minute run. I think it's doable. We're getting way better already. Third at 7.30. Go! No, that was a shitty start. It's harder than expected, but we're also doing more progress than I expected. 
I didn't think we would be able to get below two minutes. All right, we start at seven. wasn't it that was not it dude it's snowing big flakes Crazy. look at that you see that big flakes all right all right six minutes let's go ah should he start 5.50 Let's go Could be worse gotta do bolt up that plant good good cleaner we're getting there yep Better line. Alright, jump, jump, fly. Keep it coming. even when we started but that was definitely not below two minutes that was not below two minutes we gotta get a below two minute run i want to make it hard for people to beat me i'm not giving out free discs you gotta work for it or at least game for it Felt weird. All right. Two, one, Let's hit it. <laughs> Shitty start. Back to it. Try again. Go at 2.30. Let's go. Nope. Let's go at 2.15.
Whew. Getting hot here. It's a workout. By the way, workout. We have to do another workout stream. Go! 230. Yeah. we do the other times that we had such a good start just double jump double jump glide i guess all right we started too that's a bit better line good crawled up that Pretty good. Clean exit. And to the finish line. Scuffed finished. Hey, that was less than two minutes. I could have done so so much better though. It was like 158 or something. Pass. You should try speed run in a different way. Tier three run. How fast you can mine the big rocks for top score. Sure, I thought about that. I thought about like actually like how many lubials can you capture blah 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 the thing is though it's not the same for everybody like the all the rocks they're gonna be somewhere else and what i think the core essence of a speed run is that every contestant ha has exactly the same chances so what i mean by that is you could run uh, log into like my first idea was how fast can you deplete all your energy right but then people are just gonna re-log into the game, restart the game a thousand times till they have like all the assets around the, the, the thing or till they have a really favorable distribution of the, of the things they have to mine. And that sounds weird. Then the next thing, if you do with Illuvials, you have loading screen and so on. So I think this is the best way to have an exact same, 100% the same chances for every contestant because nothing changes. You don't have a loading screen. You don't need to find anything that is randomly distributed. You just get to the eye, crawl onto the plant, get back again. But I know what you mean. I think that would be nice too, but I don't know. I would like I would like to give it have it in the original speedrun style, you know? Like if you think of Super Mario speedruns, there is not like a random seed generator that generates the stars somewhere randomly. And if you're lucky and the stars all perfectly lined up, you're gonna win. It should be exactly the same every time. Where did the time ago?
All right, there we are. 450, 450. Oh, not so bad. I use controller so I can't run in this way with the speed boots boost. Well, whose fault is that, Mr. Illuvialist? <laughs> Become a real gamer. Come to the mouse and keyboard era. And maybe uh, you want to be very fast once the game comes out and very efficient in the game. So maybe you should practice that. Three forty, no, let's start at three thirty. Go. Start at 240. No, it's too slow. Start at 230. Let's get it. We started at 2. Our goal is like 150. 2, 1, go. guy all right crawl up the plant and back we go it's so much slower in this section this time that was good Dude, it's so boy. I don't envy speedrunners, eh? It's so hard to do something perfect. It takes forever. You're never gonna get perfect. That's the tragedy of it all, I guess. What boots and jetpack are you using? The, the basic ones. Because everybody should be able to participate in the speedrun challenge without having to farm for the upgraded stuff forever.
Just the basic stuff. And when you record your try, um, you have to show that you're only using the basic stuff. I mean, you can kind of see it, but still. Basic. Basic. Start from this screen. Start the timer if you have one. You don't need to use one. But it probably helps yourself to see how fast you are. You don't have to rewatch the video and count seconds there. And then we start on three minutes. Let's get, let's get in position. Four, three, two, one, go. Lean start. Alright, alright. Alright, perfect. Pretty good. here but whatever jump jump fly jump fly and fly all right get to the plant crawl up the plant and get back ah that section was really bad The middle section was really shit. Let's try again. I'm not gonna stop till I get a good, like a satisfying score without too many fuck ups. Started to. That sucked. Uh. So we jump and then we glide. Just need to wait with the glide. It doesn't work in the beginning. Let's give ourselves some time. 1730 1730 three two one go yep yep I guess all right one jump two jump glide in here jump again glide far Get one more jump out of it. Yes. One jump, two jump, glide around the corner. Maybe hit the plateau. Jump again, glide. One more jump. One more glide. Good enough. Jump, 
Jump, glide. Jump, glide. And now get the plant. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Alright, not too bad. Get it. That was a good transition. Get up there. Get up there. The highest point. Jump. Jump. Right. Let's get out of here. Freaking art, dude! Let's see if people are even into that. <laughs> if people like the challenge. Alright, 15. 2, 1, go. What? There was only 155? It felt so good. Woo! I need, I need a little break. <laughs> God damn! I thought it was way better. Alright, 12.30, 12.30. When we start. One, go. Nope. Beautiful. 
Okay. I screwed it up. No! <laughs> it was the perfect run until here. That's way faster than just jumping slowly, I guess. break Let's do this. One and for all. Three, two, one. Thunder. <laughs> hey, it's actually fun. 
It's a bit frustrating if you don't get it, but it's fun to try. I like it. I like speedrunning. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one. seconds there. Everything else was pretty smooth though. Need a good run. Start three thirty. Such a good run. For 
started at 3.30, ended at 1.38. So that's a 1.52. 152. We can go better though. There were so many mistakes in there. All right, we start at 21. We're almost there. We're almost there, Chad. Don't you worry. We're we're gonna get there. Four, three, two, one, go. like the same time we had like seven or eight seconds left oh we're getting there one more one more i'm hooked <laughs> i am hooked to this this is fun all right we started 30 two one go <laughs> Back at it again. Let's try again. I can do this. I believe. 17. Lucky number. Lucky number 17. 2, 1, go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sucked. Hey, just got in. How's the old world looking so far? Really good. Uh, but we're not doing the usual things that you do in the old world. Uh, we're trying to do a speed run. To the eye, crawl up the plant, come back here. And so far I'm like on 1 minute 52. And I want to get a little bit cleaner. I said below 2 minutes we're going to call it, but it still feels like a scuffed up run. So I, I want to clean it up, make like a good run. And yeah, then I'm going to post a video explaining all the rules and everything. I explained it earlier. And then you can try it yourself. If you are in the top five, you get a disc. If you're number one, you get a mega disc worth like 50 bucks or whatever. And you can post as many tries as you want. And you have to post them somewhere on social media or YouTube or whatever. Tag me on Twitter so I can actually check it out and find the winners. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> That felt way slower than usual. That felt way too slow. We need a clean start at thirteen thirty. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, that's good. That's better. Get in the green. Yes, I don't know. Nah. Scuffed. Alright, we got it. We got it. We got it. Go. We go. Let's position ourselves good. We go at 45. No, we go at 40. How about touching the eye instead of climbing up the plant? You cannot touch the eye. There's like an invisible barrier. You cannot get close to the eye, actually. I kind of like the challenge of climbing up to the to the plant because it's kind of hard. It's not like super easy to do. Like it's a very good visual indicator that you did it and you can come back as soon as you crawl up the plant. Four, three, two, one, go! Yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's start at 40. 1140, 1140, 2, 1, go. Good start. Fly to the green. Jump another time. Fly another time. Yep, yep, yep. 
Right, this passage is kind of weird. How to get up there the best way? I'm not sure. Good. Gonna make it to the other side. Little hop over here. Run to the edge. Only use one jump this time. Save some energy on that one. Get all the way here. Alright, got up the plant. Let's get out of here. Alright, good enough. Up there, regenerate, jump, fly, jump, jump. Get up here, jump, 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 and another jump. Clean exit. All right, one more. Jump, jump, fly. No, I was scared that would happen. 48. Fuck, too slow. Too slow. All right, start at 30. No, we lost all our we lost all our speed. Too slow. Too slow. Look at her dancing. I'm getting, I'm getting a bit uh, weird here. Let's do it. Final run. I feel it. One, zero, go. Still in it. Pretty good, pretty good. All right, not too bad, not too bad.
<laughs> oh my god, that was a perfect run until the plant. That was it. That was it. Just the way back is a bit clumsy, but the way towards it, we have optimized it pretty well, I think. Ay, ay, ay. All right, let's start at 5.30. One, go. That's still so awkward getting up that hill. Maybe there is a better way. Four fifty, four fifty, four fifty, four fifty. One, go. <laughs> Can't get caught up on those ledges. All right, let's start at four. And we're just gonna smack down a good run and be done with it. I wanna get out of here. It was fun. It's, it's getting not so fun anymore. Two, one, go. That worked pretty good. So we climbed that hill. faster Shit, 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 shit. Can't see that. Oh no, it's gone. All right, we start at twenty one forty. Can never remember those numbers. We start at 21.30. Oh. Two, one, go. What am I doing? That was a weird random nether site there. All right, we start at 21. 
five, four, three, two, one, go. <laughs> Fucking rock in the way. Playing 130. Oh, thanks. Thank you. That would be a great help. Because then I don't have to wait for like round numbers. 2030. Go. It's lower than usual, but maybe Clean it up somewhere else. Nineteen twenty. One, go. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not getting better. I kind of plateaued. 1830. Two, one. Man, my timer is a bit fucked up. Keeps jumping seconds sometimes. Three, two, one, go. 1820. <laughs> Sorry. Can't get a good opener anymore. Seventeen fifty two zero. Nope. Seventeen forty three two one zero. Perfect run as well. Awkward. Awkward. That was such a smooth run. All right, at sixteen hundred. Three, two, one, go. Smooth 
with it. Just sprint up here. Fuck it. Jump into... Jump. Yep. Come on, buddy. Alright, that was like... We lost one second there. Definitely be worse. Clean entrance. Yep. Exit. Yep. One more. Jump, jump. Bye. Now don't screw up the ending. Eleven. Nice. That's one minute forty nine. All right. That's it. That's the run. Woo. That was pretty clean. One, two mistakes, but the only problem I have is when coming back, like the mountain climb section that I was calling out, that feels a bit awkward. Like there is maybe a better way to do it. But that brings us in a high position to fly out all the way from inside all the way till here. And then we had one more go. I think that's as clean as it gets for now. I'm gonna watch back the video to see how fast it was exactly. I think it was 149. Woo. Stressful when you have a good run and then you're like, shit, I, I cannot fuck up now. Don't screw up, don't screw up. Yeah, so basically I'm gonna take some segments of the stream today, gonna make an announcement video for the speedrun. Explain the rules and everything, the prices and what you have to do. And yeah, I think we're gonna... Maybe next Monday or on the weekend, we're gonna check in and see who won, who is the fastest. I'm also curious if people are stoked about it and like it's... First I was like, oh, I'm gonna make this for the community, right? It's a good, good event for the community. People are gonna have fun. There is something to earn in the overworld. And now I'm like, damn, that was painful at the end. <laughs> Some people are gonna curse me for that challenge. But yeah, I think it's it's pretty fun. Something new, something competitive in the old world. And with that, we're almost three hours in. I think I'm gonna call it, get to video editing. I wanna stream less because we've been streaming every day last month. So I wanna take it easy, focus a little bit more on videos, on editing on my YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to YouTube to not miss out any of the content and thank you very much for tuning in thank you illuvialist for keeping track that was great and appreciate you all i hope you have a wonderful day peace out do something nice for yourself and your family and your friends touch some grass that's it that's all subscribe hit that subscribe button down there should be down there not go find it you got it